Hi, this is Charles Cecilia coming to you again from New York City Comic Con 2018. We're now with Brian Tan. How's it going? It's going great, man. Thanks. Oh, this is fabulous. Well, one of the things I want to talk about today is perhaps the most original and creative line in statues today, which is the Batman Samurai line. I noticed that you have m most of the series displayed out here today, which I imagine with more to come. More to come. So one of the things we can do just very briefly, let's talk about this first one, the Batman Samurai, the one that launched the uh, the, 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 what the do you want to call it? The whole yeah. line. Yeah. So um, this was uh, sculpted by? This is sculpted by um, Harry. Uh, Harry, uh, he's a uh, partner with, with Martin, one Martin. of the first. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. Harry, we met you in Singapore. Hello. Yeah, hi, Harry. And so, yeah, Harry did this phenomenal piece. And it's the very first of the line, the, the granddaddy of our, our full samurai line, Patient Zero, we call it. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah so he's the very first piece. Uh, he took us, I would say, almost two years. To, to get this thing out. Oh, wow. Because well, there was a lot, he was the first, and, and we had to do a lot of background research into uh, costume designs, uh, uh, the history of, of samurai yeah, and ninja. Sure. Yeah. You, you want to feel like you're not in Gotham anymore. Yeah, we, we wanted to make it believable. Like, like uh, what happens if, if Bruce Wayne or Batman actually got transported into the world of samurais? Who will he align with? What were his core values? What will he be? So, and, and, and it fitted really, really well. So, yeah. Well, one of the things I'm noticing is that, you know, we're going to go through them all. Uh, this is a, just a tremendous amount of detail. Yeah. You know, there, there's no cutting corners on this one from the armor to the weaponry to the pose to the base. I mean, you guys really worked hard on this one. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to really explore the, um, this is the latest one, Deathstroke. This what? is the latest one that we, we have a color prototype. Right. Um, and uh, so Deathstroke is shown here in one of his switch outs. So he, he has another hand uh, holding the other uh, sword. So this is the shotgun version. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, Deathstroke, if you, if you capture the details, we, we didn't spare any, any uh, details at all. I mean, everything is, is really textured. Yeah, there's no cutting corners. No cutting corners. Can you, yeah. can you tell me what it says on this flag? I actually can't. I know because uh, it's it's kind of. Uh, uh, we'll get that for you later on. We promise. But basically, for most of the statues, we do try to in include a little bit of um, the uh, uh, Japanese and Chinese kanji words in it. And uh, but this one, uh, if I'm not wrong, it refers to wait, waiting. Perhaps it's waiting and ambush me. Yeah. We'll figure yeah. that for sure. I knew. I see this very ambitious-looking base. What exactly is the story behind this? Well, it's so so because I feel the history. I feel like they're 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 basing this on something. Well, kind of because Deathstroke is all about like uh, he's an assassin. He's always killing. He's associated with death and 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 uh, a mercenary. A mercenary, yeah. And so unlike the other bases, like for example, for Batman, he stands on top of a, a temple, a shrine. He's a protector of the innocent, right? And this guy, he's he's no, he's he's out there to kill, you know. Right. So so the the base we chose was actually um, kind of a. Um, Fallen, what we call a fallen samurai warrior, is you know, but, but he's got um, his his dead and he's showing his skeletons, but he's having the uh, the armor of the head all over that. So it, it's actually a symbolic kind of symbolizing he's going against the samurai bat family in a way. One of the things that I'm noticing, I'm going to say very quickly, when we're looking at the Batman, we're looking at the Deathstroke, is that you're kind of stuck in the, you know in the past and in the present. You've got the samurai it's insignia, yeah. which is like that particular type of armor, which looks so to hundreds of years old. And then you've got the modern weaponry. So it's a very nice blend of the past and the future. And it just adds to the creativity and uniqueness of this design. And that's why it's been such a pleasure to be reviewing these over the last couple of years. So let's go over. We're going to look at this one here. This is the poison ivy. Holy smokes. You know, the Poison Ivy is, is literally one of the most beautiful statues to come out this year. And, um, and, and we, we know it's, uh, it's sculpted by Martin. Martin? Is that Martin once again? It's Martin once again. Martin, we're coming for you for a big, huge interview, so be prepared. Uh, so, yeah, um, uh, well, um, for us, Poison Ivy, was, uh, she's always been portrayed as the seductress, the one that charms men and women alike. So The ultimate seductress. Ultimate seductress. And, and I guess there's nothing more fitting than being a geisha. That's the reason why she's designed this way. Yeah. And we have two versions of this, one with the umbrella, and if you don't want to hit the umbrella, that's very good. She's wearing this mask. It's just a beautiful, beautiful piece. And one of the things that you want to uh, mention, you see these vines, that's actually not her costume, right? That's actually coming out of her skin. That's the way they're, they're designing this character. So it's a beautiful, beautiful piece. And you can see how her vines, that she's controlling them, but, you know, uprooting the, the street lamp from yeah. the ground. Because so, the vines in front of her friend. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, it's, it's also one of the more complicated pieces to put together. 
Right, right. Uh, yes, I can uh, attest to that. So let's look at this over here. We're looking at the Bane. Now, this was uh, the last time we saw this, or at least the last time we saw it. It wasn't painted, and now we see it fully painted. And this looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, Bane, uh, yeah, you're right. The last time you saw it, it was unpainted. It was a prototype. And this is after we apply the paint on, you can see the different textures. You can see armor being metal metallic and the skin being matte. Uh, and, and even the venom has little bubbles inside, uh, create that kind of uh, liquid feel. So this is a massive, massive piece, right? Because yeah. uh, Bane needs to be big and menacing. So, yeah. It's yeah, I think it's, and I, I like the way you have the, um, the venom fluid going into him from this, um, his power pack of some kind. Oh yeah. He can destroy whoever he wants in, in his own fashion, right? So he has this kind of like a death, death axe. He has this club. Yeah, so this is, um, oh, I want to say something. This one I know. So there's a word on his shoulder pad. It, oh, yeah? it, it says die. Die. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is, this version is an older version that we, we painted and we brought it to China. And some of the uh, Chinese fans told us that the word that die is not very um, accepted culturally. So it's been changed since. So now the new word is called um, destroy, me. Okay, so we changed works. the word. Yeah, that works. You know, it's good. You want to stay authentic. I think that's great. Yeah. So let's take a look at uh, this is the back girl. The bad girl, the yeah. The Gordon back girl. Yes. Uh, yeah. Once again, you know, you've got somebody looking very heroic. Whenever it seems that, whenever you want to sculpt a character, I don't care if it's a, a man or a woman, you really intensify who they really are. Yeah. And she's always been brave and brash and courageous, and you really see all of that. You know. And, and there's one keyword. She's always been supportive. She's very supportive of, of Batman. She's always supporting him, helping him. So that's the reason you see the base itself. It's also fashion in a state, statement in a sense. That's a, it's a supportive kind of structure mm -hmm. to, to show her her kind of a position in the Bat family as well. And yeah. this comes with three different portraits. Front, sorry, two others on top of this one. Yeah, so total of three different portraits. And yeah, there's a ninja version. Um, Are there different weapons also? Uh, yeah, they ha he, she's holding different weapons. She has one that uh, she even has a version where you take off a cape and she wears a red scarf like those uh, ninjas. Yeah, so she's very on ninja. Yeah. It's very nice. I think this one's beautiful. Are you going to be displaying the other portraits at uh, New York City Comic Con? Yeah, we'll be switching the, the portraits and the switch out parts uh, day to day so that every day someone comes here, they have something new to see. Fabulous. So let's take a look at the last one that you have displayed here. This is the Catwoman, Selena Kyle. The Catwoman. On her bike. Now, you see what's interesting is that, you know, I was talking about how you mix the past and the present. Yeah. You know, even on the back girl, you can see that she's wearing this older armor, yet wearing, uh, yet and, and the back wielding. And is a little bit steampunk as well. Yeah. yeah. And that's another interesting touch. Yeah, yeah. So what's going on here? Okay, so I mean, uh, I think the, the thing to explain is that uh, we're not talking about Batman in the uh, in a in the old Indian uh, pseudo kind of uh, samurai period. So he's actually in what we call um, Neo Tokyo, Neo Japan, where it's it's, it's interesting mix of steampunk. A modern uh, um, uh, engineering uh, technology and also uh, ancient costumes. Because even today, if you go to Japan, you see them wearing their, their traditional costume walking on the streets as well. And that's what we love about the whole uh, Japanese culture. And we wanted to have this mixed infusion. So it doesn't limit to us just doing things um, all based on one uh, generation of period. So they all have. So, so for Catwoman, we needed to show her in a kind of a, a thief costume, but at the same time, she has this cool slick bike that brings her around to, to, to take stuff. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is that they're kind of all living in a world where they exist. Yes. And I think it really, really works. Now, all of these are available here at the Comic-Con? Uh, no, uh, uh, Ivy and Catwoman has been out for some time. They've totally sold out. You can't oh get my. them anymore. This is just here for display. Okay. Um, Secondary marketplace and... Yeah, or you could get it from Martin because Martin sculpted this as well. Oh. Martin! Martin. <laughs> Well, I think this piece is very beautiful. I think this entire line just, just is a huge bike. success. This piece is actually, we're selling the black cat. The cat woman comes as an accessory. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's buying the black cat. Cat woman comes as an accessory. Okay? Oh, yeah, okay, we'll remember that. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much for taking this time to talk to us. Uh, it's a Coming pleasure. to you live once again from New York City Comic Con 2018. Come down and see us. Come down and take a look at the pieces. They're absolutely wonderful. And pretty much most of them are available for pre-order. See you soon. See Thanks. You